So this is how the 2021 Formula 1 World Championship comes to an end. It was a super controversial finish with many discussions, many protests. So in today's video we will analyze everything that happened and we will read the regulation, the protests, the decisions and the trial that took place after the race in order to understand exactly what happened and whether Michael Masi did something legit or not. But let's start from the practice session. Hamilton comes out of the pits. Probably the team didn't tell him via radio that Mazepin was coming. So Mazepin found Hamilton in the middle of the line and had to brake in order to avoid the crash. Article 31.5 states that any driver taking part in any practice session who, in the opinion of the stewards, stops unnecessarily on the circuit or unnecessarily impedes another driver shall be subject to the penalties referred in Article 31.4. The Article 31.4 states that such incidents can also be investigated after the sessions and one of the possible penalties is the reprimand. When a driver receives three reprimands during one championship, he gets a 10 position grid penalty in the race. So Hamilton already had two reprimands and if he got a third one, he would have gotten a 10 position penalty and that would probably have cost him the world title. And considering that Mazepin had to break in order to prevent a possible crash, that clearly should have been penalized. Considering that we have seen some reprimands for some other situations better than this one. So, in my honest opinion, during the whole weekend, the race direction didn't want to interfere with the title fight. So in many situations, they didn't want to give a penalty. And we will see it during the video. But apart from that, let's go to the race. Verstappen, even if he had the soft tires, did a horrible start and Hamilton passed him. In the Italian television, the commentator states that this bad start would do to a mistake from Verstappen, who put the first gear 20 seconds before Hamilton, so he took the clutch pull for too long and that would have overheated the clutch, making the car start badly. I don't know anything about that, I, did, I never drove a Formula 1, so I trust him about this. So the race starts and immediately after a few corners, the first controversial episode took place. Verstappen passed Hamilton in the chicane and Hamilton to avoid contacts cut the chicane and gain an advantage. The regulation says that if you cut the track and take an advantage, you have to give all the advantage back. So the Red Bull wanted Hamilton to, to give the position back while Hamilton simply gave the gap back, lifting, losing approximately one second and letting Verstappen close the gap no investigation was necessary. Once again, I think the race control didn't want to give penalties that would have changed the outcome of the race. But in my honest opinion, if we look at the accident, Verstappen didn't leave the track because he stayed with two wheels on track. And if we look at the incident from the helicopter, we see how Hamilton, even when Verstappen was already in the inside, tried to steer on him. While Hamilton could have simply kept braking, let Verstappen go wide, then cross the line and try to overtake him again. So in my opinion, Hamilton, by cutting the chicane, took a big advantage, because in the next straight, he was so far from Verstappen, that Verstappen couldn't try to overtake him again. Moreover, Verstappen in the apex was already ahead of Hamilton, so he already done the overtake. <sighs> yeah, I mean, that's borderline, but in this case I think that at least Hamilton should have given the position back. Because if the runway would have been made of grass, Hamilton would have not kept the position. So the race continues, Verstappen and Hamilton tires wear out, so they do the pit stop to change them. Max is now 8 seconds late to Hamilton, and now Red will play their card, Checo Perez. They sacrificed him by keeping him out only in order to slow down Hamilton. And Perez did something incredible. Also thanks to the desire of Hamilton not to take unnecessary risks, Perez had an incredible fight, always to the limit, but always fair, and kept Hamilton behind for one and a half lap, making him lose seven seconds and allowing Verstappen to close all the gap. The following radio from Verstappen was super fun because he said, Checo is a legend. Oh, Checo is a legend. So the race continues, but Verstappen fails to catch Hamilton because Hamilton today is so damn fast. But now the first decisive moment arrives. Virtual safety car because Giovinazzi stops. And here comes the Red Bull first strategic move. Second stop for Verstappen, new set of hard tires. 
So why did they stop him during a virtual safety car? The reason is simple. When you do a pit stop, you lose a lot of time because you have to drive slowly and you have to change tires. So normally they calculate that you lose from the other drivers between 22 and 24 seconds. And that's because you're driving slow in the pit lane while everyone else is driving fast on track. But when the virtual safety car comes out, everyone in the track is forced to drive slowly. So if you're driving slowly in the pit lane and all the other drivers are driving slowly on the track, you lose less time from them. So on average, they calculate that during the virtual safety car, you lose between 12 and 14 seconds. So Max stops, new tires, and he will therefore be able to drive faster than Hamilton, which on the other hand will have to save tires for the end. So he returns 17 seconds late. Stack gap at 17.0 for Verstappen. And Hamilton is told that Verstappen will have to drive 8 tenths of a second per lap faster than Hamilton in order to catch him. He will need 8 tenths a lap on us to catch. So we just need to keep that in mind. And then Hamilton asks, why didn't you stop me too? We never risk leave me out, no? And here comes the first interpretation of the Grand Prix. In these cases, whoever is behind has a tactical advantage because being behind will do everything later than the driver in front. So if the driver in front decides to stop, the driver behind can do the opposite. So in this case, if Hamilton would have stopped, Verstappen would have stayed out. So Hamilton would have came out behind Verstappen and then he would have needed to pass him on track. Uh, yeah, the potential to lose track position lose too high. Which was not easy. So Mercedes didn't want to take that unnecessary risk. So now begins a cold war made of fastest laps. Verstappen is closing the gap lap after lap. He gets closer and closer, but it's not enough because Hamilton is doing well. It's driving impressively. Hamilton then passes a group of five lapped cars, which are Norris, Alonso, Leclerc and Vettel. And Verstappen is 11 seconds late and now he has to pass all these five cars and we have just five laps remaining. At this point, it's clear that Verstappen has no chance to win the race. The only thing that can change the outcome of the race is a safety car. And here comes the moment. Lap 53, Latifi crashes and the safety car comes out. Now, let's forget the conspiracy bullshit that say that Latifi did it on purpose to let the rebel win, which is stupid because why would a driver like Latifi, who brings 40 million a year to race in Williams, which is equipped with Mercedes power units, would have wanted a Red Bull to win the, the world championship? Why? So let's talk about something serious. Safety car, five laps to go. Nobody knows whether they will be able to solve it in five laps. So here comes the Red Bull strategic move. Verstappen is 11 seconds behind. So for the same reason of the virtual safety car, Verstappen stops to change the tires and put the soft tires. This way he will not lose the track position and because of the safety car, he would close all the gap to Hamilton. So the question is, why didn't Hamilton stop to change the tires as well? Because if Hamilton would have stopped, he would have come out behind Verstappen because the gap was 11 seconds and the stop under safety car takes between 12 and 14 seconds. So Verstappen would have been the leader and Hamilton would have been the second. Now, if the race ended under a safety car, Verstappen would have won the championship. But if the race would have restarted, probably Hamilton would have passed Verstappen because of the fresher tires. The thing is that Mercedes couldn't take that risk because if the race finished under the safety car, which was quite feasible, Mercedes would have lost the championship if they stopped. So they had no choice to keep Hamilton out. And Red Bull, having the advantage to decide to do the opposite of Hamilton, and having nothing to lose, decided to stop Verstappen. So the time passes, and in lap 56, the race control says that the lap car cannot unlap themselves. Then we get to lap 57, with the communication that only five lapped cars can unlap themselves, which are the cars between Hamilton and Verstappen, and the safety car will exit in that lap. This means they will be able to race for another lap. Now Verstappen is super close to Hamilton. Hamilton is driving unnecessarily slowly to slow down Verstappen, who, which cannot pass him until the end of the lap. And also for a moment past Hamilton, which is not legal, but we will see it in a few minutes. Then the race restarts. Verstappen, having fresher tires, passed Hamilton, took the lead and won the World Championship. Now everything that happened in these five last laps created a lot of discussion. And now I want to read the regulation in order to understand if the race control did something legit or not. Because after the race, Mercedes did two protests. 
which have been rejected, and then Mercedes said they will appeal to the decisions. Now, let's see why the complaint was made and then try to understand what happened. Now, first, let me remind you how in motorsports the protests work. If you want to make a protest, you will have to pay a fee to start a protest. In Formula 1, this fee is set to 2,000 euros. If you wanted to appeal, the cost is set to 6,000 euros. If you win the protest, you get the money back. If you lose the protest, you lose the money. I know that 2,000 euros per protest, which makes 4,000 euros, might sound <laughs> nothing for Mercedes, but yeah, it was fun to show you how it works. Also, let me remind you that the decisions are not taken by the race director, which was Michael Masi. But the decisions are taken by the stewards, which in this case are Gary Connolly, Felix Holter, Derek Warwick and Mohamed Alashmi. Basically, the race director controls the race and every time there is an investigation, it gives it to the steward, which take the decision. It's not the race director that judges the investigations. Now, let's look at the first complaint. We can read violation of Article 48.8 which states, with the exception of the cases listed under A2H below, no driver may overtake another car on track, including the safety car, until he passes the line for the first time after the safety car has returned to the pits. Now, Verstappen for a moment overtook Hamilton under the safety car, but that happened because Hamilton was driving very slowly. So the complaint from Mercedes was rejected for the following reason. The stewards determined that although car 33 did at one stage for a very short period of time move slightly in front of car 44, at a time when both cars were accelerating and braking, it moved back behind car 44 and it was not in the front when the safety car period ended. Accordingly, the process is dismissed and the process, depo and the process deposit is not refunded. So, my honest opinion about this is that Hamilton was driving very slowly, which is prohibited by Article 48.5, which says that no car may, may be driven unnecessarily slowly, erratically, or in a manner which could be deemed potentially dangerous to other drivers or any other person at any time, whilst the safety car is deployed. So, they both did a small irregularity. So, either you penalize them both, or you penalize none of them. Uh, now guys, just a bit, j just a little thing. In the Italian channel, I did a video about Jeddah where I explained everything that happened. It's already been 10 days, probably it's too late, but let me know if you want to have that video in English as well. Because if you didn't understand what happened, I will upload it in English as well. Then, if you're liking this video, please subscribe so it's showing me support and you'll get notified when I upload new Formula One videos. Thank you. So let's look at the second protest. Protest against final classification for violation of Article 48.12. And here it gets complex, and I, and I want to explain it to you. Now, as I think you already know, it often happens that during races we have lapped cars. What actually is a lapped car? When we have car racing, usually the leader is very fast and the last car is very slow. So, considering that we are racing in a closed circuit, after some laps, the leader, which is going so fast, might catch the last car. In that case, the last car must let the leader by, so that the leader laps the last car. Now, when there is a safety car towards the end of the race, the following can happen. It may happen that the leader was super fast and lapped some drivers, while the second still has to lap those cars. If at that point a safety car comes out, we will have the leader, which in our case was Hamilton, we will have the lapped cars, and we will have the second, all driving behind the safety car. So the regulation states that in this case, when the race director gives the order, the lapped cars may overtake the leader, overtake the safety car, unlap them, drive a bit faster and rejoin the end of the group. And this is also for safety reason, because restarting a race with all the cars together, with two cars fighting for the victory and some lapped cars which are fighting between them and which are between the first and the second, that would be a mess. So, now that you know how it works, let's see what happened. Third to last race lap. They give a message saying that the lapped cars cannot unlap them. This probably was because the marshal were still cleaning the track, so considering that the lapped cars that just unlapped will be driving fast, that would have been dangerous. Then we get to the penultimate lap, and the message that only those five cars between Verstappen and Hamilton will have to unlap them. And immediately after that, the safety car in this lap message is given. Now, let's read the protest to understand why this was controversial. 
we have the parties Mercedes, Red Bull and the race director. Mercedes claimed that there were two breaches of the sporting regulations, Article 48.12, which states that any cars that have been led by the leader will be required to pass the cars on the lead lap and the safety car. And once the last lap car has passed the leader and the safety car, the safety car will return to the pits at the end of the following lap. So all the cars should have unlapped themselves and not just those five and the race should have been restarted the lap after that and not the same lap. And Mercedes argued that if this had been complied with, car 44 would have won the race. So give us back the world title. <laughs> yeah. Then Red Bull defends themselves in this way. Red Bull argued that any does not mean all. Okay. <laughs> the article 48.13 of the sport regulation states that the message safety car in this lap is the signal that it will enter in the pit lane at the end of the lap and that therefore the article 48.13 overrides article 48.12. Then the article 15.3 gives the race director overriding authority over the use of the safety car. Basically for the article 15.3, the race director can do whatever he wants. This is the regulation guys. Then they said that even if all cars that had been left, eight in total of which five were allowed to, to overtake the safety car, it would have not changed the outcome of the race. Then the race director stated that the purpose of article 48.12 was to remove those left car that would interfere in the racing between the leaders. And that in this view, the article 48.13 was the one that was applied in this case. The race director also stated that it had long been agreed by all the teams that were possible, it was highly desirable for the race to end in a green condition, so without safety car. So the race director just did what all the team agreed during the season. So to do everything the race director can not to make the race finish under a safety car. So the steward, having listened to all the parties, decided the following, that the article 15.3 allows the race director to control the use of the safety car, which in our determination includes a deployment and withdrawal that although article 48.12 may not have been applied fully in relation to the safety car returning to the pits at the end of the following lap, article 48.13 overrides that and once the message safety car in this lap has been displayed, it is mandatory to withdraw the safety car at the end of the lap. That notwithstanding Mercedes request that the stewards remediate the matter by amending the classification to reflect the position at the end of the penultimate lap, this is a step that stewards believe is effectively shortening the race retrospectively. <laughs> it's hard to read, guys. <laughs> and hence not appropriate. Accordingly, the protest is dismissed and the protest deposit is not refunded. So Mercedes said that will appeal to the decision. So we will wait. Whoa, what an end. Not just on track, but also in some kind of trial in the race control. I, I believe this document clarifies the ideas. In my honest opinion, what happened there is that the race control didn't want to interfere with the result by giving penalties and respected the request of all the teams to do everything they can not to finish the race behind the safety car. And in order to do that, they followed the regulation because the article 15.3 basically says that the race director can do whatever he wants. Honestly, I'm happy because Verstappen won, because he's super fast and the whole Red Bull deserves it. And I'm also sad because Hamilton lost the championship because he's a phenomenon and he proved how a good driver he is. I'm also sorry that the championship has been based on a controversial situation like this one. I would have preferred to see them racing without strange things happening but I mean when you have a crash five laps from the end what could have the race control have done if the race finished behind safety car that would have sucked if I gave penalties for for all the mistakes that the driver did we we wouldn't have seen them fighting maybe the best thing they could have done in order to avoid all the discussions was to give a red flag the thing is that that crash was not that bad to give a red flag because in just four laps they cleaned everything but with the red flag they wouldn't have given an advantage to the red bull so maybe that would have been the best option if we think about karma this year verstappen was very unlucky because of the crash in baku because of the crash in silverstone because of the crash in hungary so a bit of luck in the last race i think was well deserved let me know in the comment below what you think about this video and if you liked it and if you want to see another one please subscribe to the channel and I will post some new videos. 
バイバイ。